Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. Welcome to my flooring trade tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install LVT, which is luxury vinyl tiles. Now in each box, you get 10 individual planks, which will cover about 2.2 square meters. The length of them are 120 centimeters and the width of them are 18 centimeters. However, the depth, the overall depth is about 5.2 millimeters, but one millimeter of the base of it is the underlay, which is already attached to the bottom. So you do not need a separate underlay on the floor. These can be fitted directly onto your subfloor and it's got quite a good grip as well. It doesn't move very much. Now all four sides have a very clever locking system where they'll interlock in and press down and once they're connected they will not come apart. I'm going to make a start from the left hand corner here and work my way all the way across to the right. Now you might find when you take the planks out of the packaging there is a variation in the shades so it's worth mixing these up giving them a good shuffle around before you start to install them. Once you've done this, prepare the surfaces by cleaning up any dust or debris, making sure it's dry and flat, ready to lay the boards on. I'm going to start in this far corner with my first plank on the left hand side of the room and work my way to the right. Now, what you need to do is paste these out first because what you don't want to do is start with a full one, work all the way down that end and end up with a little small cut when it meets that wall because you want to be having about a two, 250 millimeter piece on each end. Now I've also got an off cut from a previous project I've done that's had a piece cut off there. So I don't want to waste that. I'm going to actually let that be my starting point in here. And then these will click in very simply like this and lock into position. Once that's in, I take my rubber mallet, little tap on that, and that's literally locked into position. It's quick and easy. Now we do need an expansion joint. On a room this size, most of the time, it's normally about six millimeters, and you want that around all four sides of your room. However, on this first couple of planks that I lay down, I'm not gonna worry about that expansion gap just yet because if you start putting things behind their spaces to make that gap it's a little bit harder lining them in so I'm letting this side wall here act as a position to keep that or stop it moving out of position while I lock all these in once I've locked a couple of rows in I'll simply slide it all back and then place my packers around each edge I'm going to lay these out together as a dry rub before clipping them into place so this last piece yeah, that's plenty. So it'll be cut off from this end, so the cut itself will go tight up into the corner there. And of course, the joint there will clip into here. But that's given us, that's given us about 400 millimetres there, which is an ample off-cut size to start my second row. So now I know the size works. I can click and lock each plank into position of this first row. Now you're ready for your first cut and they are quick and easy. I'm going to be using one of these guillotines where I slide the plank under and simply chop it down. If you don't happen to have one of them, there's four other ways you can cut them. One is with a trimming knife and a straight edge, score it a couple of times and snap it. It will cut that easy. You can also use a hand saw, a circular saw and even a chop saw as well. So there's a variety of different options, but you've got to get your measurements right. Bear in mind, our joints here where they click, of course, need to meet. So the cut has to be this end. So the great way of doing that is you turn it over. So that clip joint butts up against here. Now that's almost our cut point. However, we have to bear in mind we need a six millimeter expansion gap on one end and we've still got to allow for the six millimeter gap on the other end. So 12 millimeters is the minimum I'm going to allow to cut off there. So. That's our length that's being cut off, which will be here. And then another 12 millimeters on there. I'll take my tape measure. And we're going to be round about here. And that'll give us a nice expansion gap on the both sides. So now I'll transfer that mark. 
I'll transfer that mark onto this side here. I'm going to place that along here. Put my mark just in the middle of this section and start to chop it down like this. There we go. So that's the cut edge here. And then this side, we have the lip, which clips into the system, comes down that way. We give that a little knock. That's connected. And we've got a 12 millimeter gap there now. So when I get my second course on here, it's gonna bind all these in together, and then I'm gonna pull it down there. So we've just got a six mil gap there and the same at the opposite end. Now for the second row. So this is my off cut that clips into position. And remember, I'm just putting it up to this end for now. It will be slid down later. Little tap and it's locked. The next piece, clip in, slide into position. Now this is a bit trickier because you're putting the two pieces in. There we go. The two clips, one in that one and then one in there as well. But that is clipped together really nice and easy. Once it is clipped together, it literally, you know, you can't pull them apart. They're super strong. Then you can continue laying the planks down the row. Starting by clicking the left-hand side section in first, followed by the back piece. Once it's in, give it a gentle tap with your rubber mallet to click it into position. Then you're ready to do another cut. Now you can measure this with a tape measure, but bear in mind you do have to cut it about 12 millimeters short, because remember, we haven't slid it across yet, giving it an equal six millimeter gap at both sides. So again, the third one, I'm gonna do three rows before I set my expansion joint in place. So again, it's still tight up on the back end, it's tight up against there, locking this off cut in position from the other end, Hammer it down. Now, once you've completed the third row, you'll be able to slide the floor in one piece, a fraction away from the wall. This will allow you to put the six millimeter packers all the way along the back edge. I'm spacing them out about every meter apart. You'll also have to do the same on each side. Then you can continue to lay the floor using the same method as you did on the first three rows of planks, making sure that you've got at least 250 millimeters gap between any joints on the planks. Luxury vinyl tile floors is the perfect choice for any busy home. It can be used in every room due to its excellent versatility, even in damp prone areas such as kitchens or bathrooms. I've almost finished laying the floor now. It's come to the cut right at the very end, butt up against this wall and then around these corners into the doorways. So I'm gonna to have to measure these out, work out what they are, bearing in mind you still want that six millimeter uh, expansion gap along this side as well. We've got it there, we've got it on both ends and at the start and line. So we transfer our measurements onto the plank but before you cut it, double check, because you don't want to waste the whole plank like this. You have got the lip on here, and then you've got the groove, so be aware of which side you're cutting off that it clicks into the groove in here. So now it's marked, I'll just place another plank on top of there and draw a line in. Now there's a number of different ways you can cut these planks. I'm using a small battery operated circular saw. However, you could use a jigsaw, a hand saw, or a trimming knife with a straight edge. Okay, so this should just clip into here, leaving us a good five millimeter gap. Six millimeter at least, getting that in, yeah, perfect. Great, now for the next one. Now this plank involves four different cuts. 
to go around these two corners here so that plank continues through the doorway so how we measure this one is we can place that up against here again making sure that that lip goes inside that groove we know we want to have our six mil gap there so we're going to put a little mark like that then we put it down flat line it up to where it's going into that groove and transfer a mark here again leaving our expansion gap okay. i'm going to take set square that line in here and the same again this line in here okay Just double checking them 55 55 perfect 55 just in case that corner kicks out. So that is two cuts to take that corner piece out that'll go around there. The next stage is, is doing it on this side, but I'm not gonna mark up that side until I've cut out that and make sure it fits snug. And when I'm happy with it and it fits snug, then I'm gonna mark it this side. So we'll just check if that one fits in there okay. Yeah, yeah, still got a good, good expansion gap there and in there as well for this. So now, I'm gonna place it into position and do the same. This end, mark it here. in here yeah plenty of room easy six mil gap there and six mil there as well so squeeze it into the click fit system perfect making a straight cut using my guillotine I'll continue the planks under the doorway followed by a further cut of the full length of a plank using my circular saw which leads on to another corner cut to continue all the way across the room for the final external corner cut. Now the last row of my planks needed just 15 millimeters trimming off before it placed into position, giving me the six millimeter expansion gap. Then you can use a pulling bar, clipping it over the back edge where it's been cut, gently tapping it to click and lock it into position. Now the floor is laid, you can remove your spaces from around all four edges. And of course we have got this expansion gap that needs to be covered. So a couple of things first, we're gonna get some clear silicone and spot a few little areas around. It doesn't need filling all the way around because if this floor does expand in any way, we really need that gap in there to allow it to expand. But a few spots of silicone just stops the floor from actually twisting or moving because remember it is a floating floor but this gap wants to be covered. So you can get a Scotia bead like this. This is a UPVC one, it's a gray effect. You can get them all different colors, of course, and even different sizes. You can get wood ones as well, which would go great against the wooden wall here. Now that would look lovely when it's glued and fixed to the wall. We don't fix it to the floor, because remember the floor may have some movement in it. So it's fixed to the wall. However, I'm not gonna use that one. The reason being, if we're mopping the floors in here quite regular, the fear is you're gonna get a bit of a, a bleach mark along the bottom of here and 
around the rest of our walls because it's a sit panel building. We've got the OSB board, which is covered in a uh, wax. So what I've got is some pieces of the floor. I'm going to cut them down and actually glue them to the back here. And it's going to class as an, an upstand really, or, or a skating board, let's call it. And that'll go all the way around and it'll protect all of my walls whenever we're mopping. And once it's fixed into place, then I can run my silicone along the bottom there to seal it. So if you want to see more how-to videos, don't forget we're social. So keep in touch on all social media handles. But if you just want to know more about the vast range of products that Tal Mountain stock, check out their website, talmountain.co.uk.